everyone. Welcome back to Who's There, a podcast where I talk to a new horror fan every week. I'm really excited about this week's episode because I was able to chat with a horror fan who I didn't really know that well before we recorded this episode. We've communicated on various horror movie Facebook groups, but we've never had an actual conversation before. I'm also really ex- excited that she's a woman. Since we've already had two men on the show, I wanted to, of course, have women on the show too. I just happen to be more friends with men than women, at least those who like horror movies. In this episode, we talk about her love of both the movie and the book versions of The Shining, why she thinks that horror fans are handling quarantine better than non-horror fans, how she picks a scary movie to watch, and what her favorite movie is so far that she's found that way. We also chat about what it was like to work on the sets of two horror movies when she was in school in London, and how her perception of horror fans has changed since she's begun to meet more horror movie fans. That's about it, so let's get into this week's episode. Hey everyone, welcome back. On this week's episode of Who's There, we have Megan, who I know from the horror virgin community. Hey Megan, how are you? Hi, thank you for having me on. I'm excited. (gasps) Me too. I'm really excited as well. Thank you for being here. Um, Because we've never really chatted outside the horror virgin community, so tell listeners and myself a little bit about yourself and where you're from, etc. Yeah, sure. Um, So I live in northern Michigan. And, um, I kind of stumbled on this community via the cult podcast. Um, and I stumbled into that one because it's a pandemic and it just felt like the right thing to listen to. Um, and so I love scary things and I have my whole life, but the, the level of scariness or the type of scariness has changed, but I've always been into creepy things and dark things. And the favorite thing my mom still says to me, even though I'm 36 is you're so weird like, okay. Thanks, mom. <laughs> yeah, my, my mom also does not understand why I'm into all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so first things first, what's your favorite scary movie? I keep going back and forth on this one, but I think right now I'm going to have to say Hereditary. Um, a lot of people are saying it, but it scared me and disturbed me in a way that a movie hasn't in a long time. And interested me too. Like I think about it in terms of like what's going on. It's not just scary. Um, But I feel like my favorite scary movie can change. Um, But if I'm only allowed to watch one on the desert island, I would probably go with The Shining. Nice. Did you see Dr. Sleep? I did. And I really, I really enjoyed it, which kind of astonished me. uh, Because I expected not to like it because that's how I go into every single adaptation of anything that I enjoyed and I liked the book. Um, so I assumed it would be terrible, but I think that, um, they did a great job. I was really impressed. Yeah. I really enjoyed that movie as well. Um, I've heard that people who like the shining, the movie don't necessarily like the book or maybe they haven't read the book. Have you read the book as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have. And actually like, I kind of got started with horror because of the book. I'd read creepy things as a kid or whatever, but I don't know how I got a hold of it, but I got a hold of The Shining and I read it way too young. I was maybe 11. And um, I remember just at the middle of the night, my light on in my bedroom that was in the dark, dark basement. It wasn't that bad, but it felt so, so dark. And just being terrified, but I couldn't stop reading because I just had to know what was going to happen. Um, and so I really do love it. I also love the movie, but I also know of the divide And I think I just love the movie for what it is. It's Kubrick. He's great. And I love him for what he does. But I do see them as kind of two separate things. Yeah. That's understandable. You're trying to bridge that gap between people who love the movie and love the book. Mm -hmm. We can Mm -hmm. get along. Exactly. We can all be (laughs) friends. (laughs) Um, So when we were talking prior to recording, you told me that you were an intern on a horror movie at a horror movie production studio in London. Mm -hmm back when you hated horror movies. So tell Mm -hmm. me, why did you hate horror? Um, It has always just like for the longest time, it scared me to to a negative place, has just been too scary. And I, for whatever reason, would super, super empathize with the victims. Like I had to remind myself that they didn't actually die, whatever. I guess I still do that with dogs, but everyone does. Yeah. (laughs) But I just really felt that pain and I would get upset about it and it would just make me feel bad. And I was one of those people that was like, who are these freaks that watch those movies? Why would anyone ever watch this by choice? This is insane. 
Um, and now I guess I'm one of the freaks <laughs> that has changed a lot for me. But yeah, I just, it was just, it could have been, I was introduced to them in a bad way or just my age. I don't know. I like it better now though, for sure. That's good. And now your favorite is hereditary. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I've seen it more than once. So I guess I'm choosing to put myself through that. Yeah. I watched it with, I watched it rewatched it with my boyfriend on my birthday. I was like, that's what I want to do for my birthday in quarantine. I want to <laughs> get a bottle of champagne and, yeah, and be traumatized. Yeah. He was <laughs> after it, he, I was like, did you like that? He was like, I was tense the entire time. No, I did not like that. I did not like that. That was very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Um, so how was filming creep and severance in London? Mm -hmm. Um, it was a lot of fun. I mostly worked on um, the script side, a lot of pre-production. I did get to meet Severance. I got to meet all the actors because it was my job to bring them their coffee. I was basically, <laughs> as an intern, you know, the, the slave of, of the area. You know, I was the one that went out and, and did everything for everyone. Um, but it was a lot of fun to meet a lot of different people. And then I actually yelled at Franca Potente on the phone, not yelled, but I was stern because I was told to be, um, she, uh, she was in Creep and she called in to get her copies of the movie and I was told under no circumstances to give out any more copies and I didn't know it was her um, until she asked me who I, she's like, do you know who I am? And I'm like, no. And she told me and I was like, hold on, let me transfer you. So, you know, un unpaid labor, you get what you get. Mm, yeah, I, I know that, I know that struggle as an unpaid intern. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you go to school in London or? Um, no, I went to school in Michigan, but this was part of my schooling. It was a internship. I was there for about six months. Um, and it was related to my field. I, you know, I'm in writing. Um, I was looking at maybe going to the film industry and then I decided I, won't, I really didn't want to fight for it that bad because it can be so tough. Yeah. Um, but I've just always been interested in pop culture and those kinds of things and writing. And so that's one place they had and they placed me there. Awesome. So, Yeah. They spent a lot of time trying to get me to love horror, um, <laughs> and they forced me to watch a few horror movies, and that's the first time I ever saw Alien, and I screamed very loudly at one point, and I could hear everyone. I mean, London, they're very small places stacked on top of each other. I could hear everyone just laughing at me, because I'm freaking out about Alien in the middle of a city in the middle of the day. But <laughs> <laughs> what other movies did they make you watch? Uh, they made me watch Jeepers Creepers, okay. which I think... I don't know why they did, um, but it scared me so badly as well. And I kept, I remember walking home from the tube that night and looking over my shoulder constantly expecting to be followed by this creature, even though again, I'm so far away from a cornfield. I mean, it's not remotely. And I rewatched it maybe a month ago and I laughed so hard. It was not scary. And I was yeah. like, what? <laughs> Perception changes so much. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, I studied abroad in London too, actually. Mm -hmm. I didn't do an internship, but I just did like a summer there. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. I love, I love oh, London. Yeah, me too. I would live there in a heartbeat if I had a skill set that they wanted. <laughs> <laughs> um, so can people find these movies anywhere on the internet if they want to watch them? Um, I'm not sure, but I think so. I know that Severance has 100% been streaming. I think the last time I saw it was streaming on... I want to say Hulu, but I cannot remember. However, they should be available to rent for sure through like Apple TV or something like that for sure. Oh, okay, cool. Well, everyone check those out. I will yeah, absolutely. do that as well. Um, what was it like to film in the London Underground? That sounds amazing slash terrifying. It was, um, it was interesting because with both of the movies, I saw a lot of behind the scenes things, um, even picking out the actors or whatever. Um, and it's very scary when you see it on TV, but in the moment, it is and it isn't. It was a creepy setting, incredibly, but people were in such a work mode that I'm actually kind of impressed by these actors and actresses that can get into these incredibly scary um, places when they have all these people around them staring at them and they have like food catering off to the side and all the different lights around them. You know, we're only seeing that one picture. And so um, it was really interesting because it wasn't that scary or creepy and I expected it to be, but then I watched the movies and they still scared me. <laughs> Even though I knew like how the sausage was made, I was still scared by them. Oh, I'm, I'm better now. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. I mean, that's why they get paid to act. So you exactly. Can, exactly. Yeah, I, I could never do it. I acted in high school and I was like, I'm not good at this. 
yeah, mm -mm. no, I would be so self-conscious about looking weird, um, you know, compared to like our method actors that commit to it, like nobody's business. So yeah, but they're good. <laughs> so do you remember, um, what was it that changed your opinion from hating to loving horror movies? How, like about how old you were when that mm -hmm. happened? Um, <laughs> so, um, I think I might've been like a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, the, le the big thing I remember doing it is um, it was Cabin in the Woods for me. And everyone said I was going to love it because I left Joss Whedon. And so I'd already seen a lot of the stuff he'd done. And everyone said it's very smart. It's very kind of meta. You should go see it. I was terrified. I liked the, the second half, but I was still very scared by it. Uh, I just felt so bad for these kids. Um, so I watched that and it was okay. But then after a while, I decided to revisit it. And it wasn't nearly scary. And so then that became kind of a movie that I watched fairly often, but that was one of the only scary ones. And then things were just up on Netflix and I started kind of trying different things out here and there. And for some reason, um, it just kind of, I caught the bug. I think I realized that they weren't as scary as I remembered. Um, and uh, two or three years ago, I set myself a book challenge to read scary books for the month of October. And I think I've been reading scary books since then. Uh, so I figured if I'm reading all this scary stuff and I'm used to a lot of these tropes and things, I'm like, it's probably not that bad. And it's not. I mean, I still get scared, but now it feels fun and it's not so overwhelming. What books would you recommend for the listeners? Oh my goodness. So many books right now. Um, the very first thing I thought of was Lovecraft Country, just because it's an HBO series right now. And the series is also like really well done. Um, and also pr a pretty fitting book because they use Lovecraft and and his issues with race too to kind of look at race in our country. So, you know, it's an interesting way to look at race um, from kind of a new lens. Um, and it's just a good book. What else would I recommend? Anything Stephen King because I love him. Well, it's not true actually. <laughs> I do love him, but some of Stephen King probably scares people away. But a lot of Stephen King, I love The Shining, I love The Shining, and it, the book, obviously. Um, I'm actually um, currently reading *Fledgling* by Octavia Butler, and I really like it. It's kind of a different take on vampires, and um, all taking kind of uh, all through this uh, female vampire's point of view. And I just think it's been really interesting because, again, it kind of looks at race and stuff, but it's also really kind of examines that vampire myth and where that might have come from and uh it's been a lot of fun to read just kind of a different take oh that's really interesting uh female vampires you don't yeah don't often in like movies mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and for this race like the females are the stronger ones which i think is really fun too i was like oh watch out for the ladies so that's been empowering always watch out for the <laughs> always watch yeah. out for the ladies so yeah for sure <laughs> Um, so do you ever just sit down and think, I want to watch a horror movie right now? And if so, how do you decide what to watch when you're looking mm -hmm. for something? Well, I mean, a big uh, secret is, you know, the horror virgin um, group or any sort of kind of like group of people who are or horror fans. You know, they're always <laughs> posting about different things that might be out. Um, but for me, I think I tend to kind of fall down um, a rabbit hole. So if I sit down, and I want to watch something scary. Sometimes I'll think about something else I saw that was good and I'll watch that director's other pieces. I might end up watching the studio's other pieces, especially if you're going to look at something like Blumhouse where, you know, it's tons of stuff. Um, and sometimes I just see what the algorithm on the streaming service wants to suggest to me, <laughs> um, whether that be Netflix or I do have Shutter. <clears throat> so I have all those options available too. But a lot of times I think it's kind of buzz and chatter. If people are talking about things a lot, I'll gravitate towards them. And then if I like what I saw, I'll look at some more things. Yeah. Good answer. Um, what is, what are some of your favorites that you found that way? Is there anything that stands out? Oh yeah. Um, my friend just saw it the other night and was amazed by it. Um, and uh, people are aware of it, but as, uh, as above, so below on Netflix, yeah, that's great. um, it's a great one. And I really like it. And I was surprised by it because I do think it was a random like Netflix algorithm you know, hey, you might want to watch this. And I was like, okay, whatever, it looks interesting. And then we just got so into it. We were halfway through and we looked at each other, um, my wife and I, and we said, wow, like, why is this so good? It's really interesting. Um, it's just because it's got the extra concepts in there too. So that's kind of one I can think of that's been a, um, a lot of fun that was kind of a random stumble. Yeah. Have you seen um, uh, The Descent? Oh, yes, The Descent. Yes, I have seen The Descent as well. Um, and I did see that after As Above, So Below, because I remember thinking like, okay, underground stuff, maybe I like that, we'll see. 
And I was so scared to see the descent as well, because when it came out, when I was younger, I just remember seeing the poster and the pictures of her kind of rising about that blood, just yeah. like covered in it and being like, this is too scary. And it was scary, but it's, it's well done. It was interesting and engaging. And I really, I really liked it. Uh, so you mentioned beforehand that your favorite directors are Jordan Peele and Mike Flanagan. What, what mm-hmm. makes them your favorite? Um, I think it's that I feel like both of them are doing interesting new things, either doing it themselves or especially in the case of Jordan Peele, supporting and financing and advocating a lot of new people and new voices. But um, I just look at their different, the different works they've done, you know, um, the whole series of um, the haunting of Hill house and how kind of amazing some of that directing was with the long shots and the different um, staging, different things in the background all the time. Um, I loved what he did with Dr. Sleep. Um, And I just feel like his, I don't know, it just seems really kind of dynamic and interesting to me, his directing. I like it. If somebody says he's going to adapt something, I feel like he um, will do a a good job, hopefully. Um, And then Jordan Peele, I just feel like he's trying to do new things and really advocate a lot for different voices, you know, especially black horror directors um, and actors. And I also am always going to love horror that has more to it than just the plot. Yeah. So I'm always going to like any directors that layer things in. That's one reason why I keep coming back to Hereditary too, because it's not just about, you know, what happens. There's these other issues, the bigger issues being dealt with in it. Um, and that always just really fascinates me. Have you seen all of Mike Flanagan's films on Netflix? Because he has a ton on there. Okay, no. And I feel bad because I say I like him. But then I started looking at some of his films and I was like, holy cow, I didn't realize how long he'd been around like how many movies he's done for how long because I feel like I feel like he's really getting a lot of traction right now and attention um and maybe it's a resurgence I'm not sure but um so no I haven't seen them all but I want to watch more now that I know he's done them because once again if if it's someone I recognize then I'm going to want to gravitate to it have you seen any of them besides The Haunting of Hill House and Dr. Sleep um Yes, but I can't even think of any off the top of my head. Um, I'm sure I've seen others, and I just can't think of what they were. There was something else big that I really liked that he did, and I just can't remember or recall what it is. The ones that I'm thinking of are Gerald yeah. Game, Ouija, oh, yeah, yep. Origin of Evil, Before I Wake, Hush, Oculus, Absentia. Hush, yes. Okay, so I've seen Before I Wake, um, Oculus, Hush, and Gerald's Game. Hush, though, um, that's the other big one I think I was trying to think of because – I really like Gerald's game too. That was really well done. Yeah. But Hush just, oh man, that was so creepy. And oh, it's one of the ones that I still sometimes can't watch if I'm like, if I'm alone. Like <laughs> I can't be alone because I'm just looking around me, like convinced that somebody's coming in. Um, you know, especially obviously with the added issue of her being deaf, but oh. Yeah. Do you have any sliding glass doors in your house? Um, no, thank God. <laughs> I have big picture windows and they are shut and covered because I'm terrified if I open it at night that I'm going to see a face staring at me. <laughs> yeah, I completely concur. Yeah. And I mm-hmm. think, I think mm-hmm. sliding glass doors are some of the scariest things that you can have in your home. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I live, I live in New York city, so I have a small one bedroom apartment mm-hmm. with windows facing the building next door. So they're there is no sliding glass door. Yeah, it feels like very secure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, and like, mm-hmm. if I scream, my neighbors can hear me. So yes, and hopefully they'll listen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah th- well, they would probably come out and be like, "Excuse me, we're trying to sleep." Yeah, please, please stop screaming. Uh, yeah, can you murder? Can you be murdered somewhere else? Yeah. <laughs> um, are you looking forward to the haunting of Bly Manor? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I've read The Turn of the Screw from Henry James, which is what it's based on. Um, my degree is in English. And so most of my like really solid background for anything is going to come from literature. Um, and so I'm just really kind of excited about it because of that. <clears throat> I'm just also really interested to see what he's going to do. I was very skeptical. I taught science fiction and fantasy and taught The Haunting of Hill House a few semesters. And I was a little skeptical that he could make it into a full season. And at first I was really annoyed because it's not, it's not the book. Um, but I loved what he did with it. And I thought it was really nice. So I'm curious to see what his take is going to be on the turn of the screw. Cause I'm sure it'll be good, but I know it's going to be different than the book. Yeah. I have not read the book, but I saw 
I saw The Turning that was out last year. Oh, mm -hmm. of the book. I know there have been mm -hmm. a lot of remakes of the book. Yes. In movie mm -hmm. form. Um, and I've only seen that one. That one was a little weird. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, yes, I'm also interested to see what he does with this and how he stretches mm -hmm. it out. Because it doesn't yes. seem like, I haven't read the source mm -hmm. material, but it doesn't seem like he can stretch it out for eight hours. No, I mean, I wouldn't think that. I'd even say it has less in it than The Haunting of Hill House. And I was already skeptical about that one. Um, but then he had this whole other, you know, storyline he built in. Um, so I don't know if he'll go that direction or not, but I feel like I saw a trailer recently. I feel like it's on its way very soon. Uh, yeah, the poster recall. was just released. Yes. Yep. So oh, hopefully it'll be good. <laughs> yeah, it'll be good since we'll all still be in quarantine probably. <laughs> yep. And I know less and less is going to be coming out of Hollywood as we go forward. So yeah, <laughs> anything will be great. <laughs> Are any of your movie theaters open right now? Actually, yeah. Um, I'm lucky, I guess, because uh, one of ours is open, but it scares me, so I haven't gone there yet. Um, they're doing everything they need to. It's an AMC, and they're seating people far apart, and people can't get refills on food and all these different things, but um, I've been a little more cautious, but we are in a region of Michigan, northern Michigan, that hasn't been hit as hard, and so um, we have a few more kind of liberties. Not that doesn't sound bad. Um, we have a few more things, uh, fewer restrictions because we don't have as high of a, a count up in our area versus um, downstate where there's a lot more cases, and so they're being a little more cautious. Oh, that makes sense. Where did you once teach uh, science fiction classes? Um, most of it is in a community college in Northern Michigan. Um, it's called Northwestern Michigan College. And, uh, yeah, it was one of our literature options and it was a lot of fun, um, for sure. And a bunch of excited, nerdy, dorky students hanging out and talking about science fiction and fantasy. It was, um, it was a lot of fun. And I did a lot of darker fantasy or, um, like the weird kind of fantasy in that one too it wasn't all um kinds of wizards and sorcerers i kind of did some other stuff too yeah what other what other uh materials did you include uh the biggest thing i included was that one of our main books most of it was short stories but one of our main books was the haunting of hell house so i kind of went for kind of this dark um fantasy horror there um which kind of comes into the realm of, of fantasy you know it's fake um then I looked a lot at uh, China Mieville. He's kind of a creepy writer. Um, uh, Jeff Vandermeer, who um, wrote the book that, I can't remember what it's called, is based on Area, it's called Area X. Um, I can't recall what it's called, but he, um, it's with Natalie Portman, and it's really weird where there's this um, odd space where she goes to find her husband who went out Annihilation. into the weird space. Annihilation, thank you. <laughs> so anyway, um, I like to use this book from Jeff Vandermeer who um, wrote Annihilation, which was the Natalie Portman movie, and he collects a bunch of different kind of dark fantasy things together in a collection called The Weird, and I would use that a lot of times too, just to show them a variety of different different things that might be creepy or scary or different without being what they expect. That's very cool. It sounds like that was probably a really interesting class to take. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I hope for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I know you're married. Does your wife like horror movies? Um, I like to say that my wife likes horror movies by proxy because um, <laughs> we often watch them um, because I want to. <laughs> um, she is a really big gamer. So sometimes we'll be watching them and she's gaming on her laptop. And so it's kind of in the background for her. Um, and then occasionally we'll watch things that she, uh, doesn't want to watch, but more often than not, I'm the one freaking out over something. And she'll ask me if we need to stop the movie. And I'll be like, no, we're not stopping the movie. Um, <laughs> while I yell in the corner. Um, she does like horror, uh, but not as much as me. I'm willing to kind of watch more and sit through more just because I enjoy it more. Um, the kind of more low budget or less interesting movies, she's more likely to be like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go do something else. See you later. <laughs> do you game at all? Um, very casually. Um, yeah. Nothing fancy. I like Mario. I like Yoshi. Um, Animal Crossing. Just things that are very low stakes. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, so I know you said you really started to like horror in the last year, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would assume there are a bunch of classics that you have maybe not seen yet. 
going back to like mm-hmm. the 70s and the 80s. Do you think, right. have you gone back or will you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm trying to work my way through everything um, in a sense. Uh, it's, uh, I've obviously seen a lot of current things that are out for streaming because that's on the front page of all of those different apps. However, I'm trying to go back and look at some of those foundational things. I've gone through um, the franchises, not all the way, but I've seen the base, you know, the basics, the first few for like um, Friday 13th and Nightmare um, on Elm Street. I've kind of tried to go to movies that people talk about a lot, but there are still a few that I haven't. The horror version podcast has actually been really helpful too, because that's been a way for me to check off what I've seen or I haven't, because I've been trying to limit myself to listening to episodes of movies I've seen. So if I haven't seen it, then I need to watch it so I can listen to the next episode, which has actually helped me see some things I wouldn't normally. The Changeling, um, which I loved, but I wouldn't have gravitated to it without kind of that reason. So that's been um, a good way too. What are some other horror related podcasts that you listen to? Um, the biggest one I probably listen to um, would be, and it's kind of tangential, but I listen to a lot of last podcasts on the left yep. and they get into horror, but they also get into true crime and they get into kind of a lot of UFO stuff. Um, but I see a lot of the same themes and that's been interesting too. Um, and just this idea of like people being interested and fascinated by things that are scary or dark, but it doesn't mean that they're scary or dark people. Um, and just kind of having that interest. Um, and I've been listening to uh, a lot of the Losers Club because I really like <clears throat> the uh, Stephen King angle. And then i um, been listening to uh, Psychoanalysis, um, Jen's podcast about um, how they're kind of looking at mental health and like what we get from these movies that are exploring these different issues. Um, those have kind of been the biggest ones, but a lot of times I'll just see one off things after I listened to hereditary I listened to some episodes about hereditary from a bunch of different podcasts but I was just curious yeah um if you sometimes when I watch a movie I'll go back and listen to the podcasts episodes that are about that and I'll be like mm-hmm. I wonder what these people mm-hmm. have to say I yeah. will admit that I watch I listen to episodes about movies that I haven't seen yet because mm-hmm. there's a slim to none chance that I will remember what I heard <laughs> that's when a I really good it, so point it's too. not really like burning it for me so. Oh, that's probably true for me. I don't know if I'd remember anyway, because sometimes I will be like, someone will say that a podcast was done about a certain episode and I'll say, no, it was never done about that movie. And then I'll realize I listened to it three weeks ago. You know, I just can't remember. So those are all of my questions. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about? Um, I don't know. I just, I just think it's a lot of fun to connect with this community because from being really afraid of horror for a long time. I assumed that people that liked horror were just dark, evil people <laughs> who like scary things and they're scary people. But I have found um, both, both from the horror version and just everywhere that the horror community can be super, super supportive and really kind of welcoming and understanding. Yes. And not just, not just compared to what I expect, but compared to some other fandom groups, like big time, which I think is nice. I know that there's always the bad apples because people are people, but that's been a lot of fun to see and the different ways that people are, are using horror to kind of help them deal with issues or think through issues um, has been really fascinating too. It's not about, it's not just about, you know, torture porn all the time. It's about, you know, what the messages are there and people connect with them in so many different ways that I find really fascinating. Yeah. Um, quote unquote elevated horror. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but even non elevated horror, I still love too. Um, it just has its limits, but I mean, so many people connect with so many movies for so many reasons. I just think that's really fascinating too. Um, the different ways that people enjoy things and why. Yeah, definitely. Um, I had the same, the same preconceived notion that you did about um, Mm -hmm. horror fans, which is why I started this podcast. Um, Mm -hmm. so, and I was listening to a podcast about the exorcist today about Mm -hmm. like, there was a several part series called inside the exorcist and it was all about how it was made from like uh the very beginning to the end Uh um and the uh host of that mark ramsey he interviewed uh jeffrey reddick who wrote the final destination series or uh something one and had a really interesting quote that i put up on uh the who's there instagram today Mm -hmm. and it said 
that outsiderness hits everybody, but especially in the horror genre, because I think a lot of the horror fans and people who make horror films grew up on these. And obviously everyone growing up was like, ew, how can you watch all that sick stuff? You must be crazy. When I meet people, the first thing they say is, oh, you're not creepy at all. The reality of it is we've grown up on a genre we've always adored, but we've always been told is pretty much one step above porn as far as respectability goes. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. I was like, I hear you. Yes. And I feel like that might also be some of why I didn't watch it sooner because what I did watch scared me. And then I grew up in a very, very conservative household and um, it just wasn't something people watched. I wasn't really kind of given that leeway. So I just was able to develop these notions. Um, And then once I finally kind of started to explore it, especially under my own control, you know, I'm at home, I can pause it. I can walk away if I need to. I gave myself that allowance as well. I was trying to be a total badass and just sit through it. But I decided, you know what? I can walk away. It's fine. And then I'm like, I discovered that horror is so much more than one thing and that I really do like it. There's lots of different types of horror, different things. And then, as I said, getting plugged into that community. I mean, some of the nicest people I've met. Yeah, definitely. All right. These are my rapid fire questions. Um, are, there any, right. are there any horror movies that you love that people generally don't like? Oh, geez. Um, shoot, I'm not doing a good job with rapid fire. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. I can't think of one. I'm terrible. Um, I want to say The Shining. I don't think, I mean, a lot of people love it, but in the horror community, I feel like it's a little divisive. And I feel like there's a lot of people that don't like it as well, especially if they like the book. And so that's been one that I have gotten some kickback from people on. Um, if you could remake one horror movie, which would it be? I'd like to remake They Live. I think that would be cool with uh, a more kind of current take on it. It could be fun to explore a lot of like social themes too, for sure. Nice. Do you hold any unpopular horror movie opinions? I don't know if they're that unpopular anymore, but um, you know, there's been a lot of different horror trends that I haven't been a fan of, like a lot of the kind of hostile stuff and then, you know, human centipede and everything, but they were popular for a while, but I feel like in general, the community, you know, some people really love them, but in general, I think people are like, they can see why. Some people might not like them, um, just kind of like I do. Um, yeah, I can't think of any either off the top of my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, should have. I should have looked that up because I feel like there was a thread in the horror version community one time about like say things that other people don't agree with. I can't remember what it was. Um, yeah. If you had to spend quarantine with one horror villain, villain, who would it be? Oh, no, that's a really good question. Um, one horror villain. Oh, hmm. I don't know if it counts as a horror villain, but I keep coming back to like Lestat from Interview with a Vampire. I just need somebody, maybe, I don't know, maybe Freddy if he doesn't kill me. I just need someone who's going to talk. I mean, we've got these guys that stalk around and just stab people. Leslie Vernon, he'd be great to be trapped with. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm, again, I'm afraid he'd kill me, but you know. Hopefully we have some rules around this quarantine. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, my mm-hmm. friend who I asked this to last week, he was like, I don't know. I was like, well, maybe Pennywise, but then that would get kind of terrifying. It would get terrifying. I was thinking maybe Hannibal Lecter because he's such a good cook, but then I was like, no, that's a bad idea. <laughs> he's going <laughs> to know where he's know. getting his meat. <laughs> I, exactly. <laughs> Okay, I have one more regular question, and it's um, an article came out a few weeks ago saying that horror movie fans are handling quarantine better than non-horror movie fans. Has that been your experience? And if it has, why do you think that it, why do you think horror movies have aided you in this? I saw that too, and the minute I saw it, I was like, oh, of course. Um, <laughs> however, um, I mean, most of the people I talk to about horror are in horror groups, which means they're already horror fans. So, you know, I don't know if they're handling it better than, than non people exactly, but I do find that a lot of us are maybe a little more willing to think about or look at things that are unpleasant. Um, even though we know a lot of it's fictionalized. I mean, like I know that, you know, the, some of it, you know, so crazy, but I think we're just kind of willing to look at some of the darkness and maybe there's, um, exposure therapy in a sense, but I'll just kind of, we're kind of prepared for something a little darker in a way that might help. Um, but I also find it kind of cathartic because as bad as the world gets, sometimes these horror movies are like, whew, it could be so much worse right now. I could be tied up and tortured. Um, 
so there's some of that too. It's kind of cathartic to like see somebody else suffering instead of you. Um, <laughs> but I think it is a lot about just being willing to look at dark things and think about them and um, not run from them. Yeah, that's a great answer. Well, this has been fun. Thank you for being such a great guest. Um, I've had so much fun. So tell everyone. Oh, thank where they- you for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, tell everyone where they can find you on the internet. Um, so you can find me at, um, Megadeth versus books, which is my Instagram, um, account. So you can check me out there. And then, um, eventually I'm going to have a podcast of my own. Um, my friends and I are going to be looking at, um, books about dark topics and looking at why they make us so comfortable. Um, and so I don't have a name yet, but once we get one, I'll let you know. (laughs) <laughs> Amazing. That sounds really interesting, even though I, I get so scared when reading horror, horror books, so I don't. But <laughs> Yeah, it's like the exact opposite of what I used to be. I could read all the scary stuff, but don't show me the movie. <laughs> all right. Well, I will talk to you soon. Thank you again. All right. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye. That's it for this week's episode of Who's There? I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Megan, and thanks again to Megan for coming on. There are links to stream both Creep and Severance in the show notes, so you should definitely check out both of those movies. As always, we'd really appreciate it if you could take a second to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and subscribe to our feed wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Who's There Pod or on Instagram at Who's There Podcast, or you can feel free to email us at the Who's There Podcast at gmail.com. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, horror movie recommendations, etc. Until next time, stay scary and wear a mask.